Hello all and sundry, great friends of the show, welcome, welcome to another glorious big day, party Monday, we're very excited about painting toy soldiers, just being enthusiastic about life really, what a great day, what a great day we're having. Uh, here's our two traps, friends thus far. Uh, we might do a little, a wee little bit of tweaking on both of these tonight, um, but I'm very excited about painting this one. This is my favourite model. So we're just going to get cracking on this, uh, on this trap, which should be glorious, glorious times indeed. Once I figure out what the fuck I'm going to do. Leaning towards rusted metal armor across the surface of the armor plates. There's no skin showing, so maybe that's the go. Yeah, I think that's the go. Corpse paint is a great suggestion. I don't think that is an idiotic suggestion for the 700th time. I think that's a great suggestion. Good work, you, sir. Just fix up my hair. Much better. Yes, hello all, welcome, welcome, Mini MF, Broadside, Alex MF, Frog Jim. Hello all. Um, let's just get cracking on this chap, shall we? Oh, there's a little bit of skin blubberiness here. Okay. Um, hope you're all well. Hope you're all doing well today, friends. It's been a, a good day to start my week on a Monday. Good about my day today. So let's just uh, zoom in on this chap a little bit. Oh, look, I am, mate. I am doing well. Um, all right. So I'll just I'll talk a little bit about my thought process with these with these models because um, I have actually put a little tiny iota of thought into them not a lot but enough um, aside from the red base coat I wanted to just do slightly different tones across um, the majority of surfaces. I didn't want each of the models to look exactly the same. So I'm using similar colours, but I'm, I'm trying to do them in a slightly different way for each of the models. So if you have a look at the skin tone on the two, they're similar, but they're not exactly the same. Um, and the same with the, the metals. I don't want there to be a real absolute sense of cohesiveness. Just for something, hey Wampa, something a little bit more disjointed, feeling a little bit... Uneven, irregular, very chaotic of me. G'day, Chuhan! So it's pretty subtle what I'm what I've I've tried to do, because I'm still using the same colours, I'm just trying to use them in slightly different ways, but Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this this paint job that I've done on these so far. 
Like they're okay. They're very different to how I know. G'day, Shadow Yvro. Ah, beautiful. Love a cheeky 16 hour lockdown, hey? Just get some hobby done. Great times. Okay, cool. I'm not going to synthwave, mate, no. Not much of a music guy myself. As much as I have a pretty good recollection of a variety of songs. I don't actually listen to that much music in my spare time. These days. I assume synthwave is some sort of musical thing. Ah, can I Gruji? Gruji. This is a Nurgle, this is a Nurgle thing, these shoes. I've been doing feet like that on Nurgle guys forever. This guy's got a big old fucking tail. How cool is that? Uh, so just to talk very briefly about the colour selection here. So again, I've gone with a metal uh, highlight on this red. I started with the red and highlighting up through a normal metal colour, or at least a, a mix of one. And I've added just a couple of little tones of red into the metal colours that I normally use, or that I've chosen to use for this, just to add a little bit of harmony, bringing the two elements together. It seems to be working okay so far. I'm not sure about the style, I'm not sure about everything with these guys. There's elements that I like, and there's elements that I think, this is dog shit. So we'll wait and see the final wash up before we get too concerned. Shout out to all of my friends in lockdown. Across Australia, there's three major capital cities and states in lockdown at the moment. Great people of Victoria look like they're uh, they're going to be out soon, um, which is excellent. Uh, Adelaide almost certainly coming out tomorrow, but uh, yeah. commiserations to all of those great people in Sydney. Grudy, I do have a video on my YouTube channel. It's called "Painting the Gold Smoke Night from Kingdom Death." talk about my process of non-metallic metal. Also, if you go back and watch my uh, painting video that I did, or my, my streams rather, for Maddox, which is a barbarian model I painted, um, and I did him all, uh, all on stream from start to finish, and I showcased my approach to non-metallic metal on him as well, so you can try that too. Oh yeah, don't forget to follow it. Is he at 91, is he? That's great stuff. Make sure you're all following Topulus on Twitch. He's a very nice man who's had a little faith peep in and around my streams and got to know him a little bit. Good chap. Good chap, really. Don't tell him I said that. I'll deny it. 
I don't know, I'd if you say I said that. Oh yes, that's the ticket, that is the ticket, well done, whoever that person was and if it was you or the Frank, well done, well done indeed. Do love a Monday, friends. More importantly, or more appropriately, I do love the end of a Monday. that I'm using to heat my house because my house gets fucking cold. <laughs> yes, my apologies. I remembered I meant to send a message to Meg. My friend Meg. Mega please. Exciting show and tell today, which we'll get onto later. Um, not at this juncture, but yeah, very exciting one. Got a got a delivery today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on, mate, at the moment. We'll, we'll just we'll see how this comes out. We shall see. It may work, it may look absolute dog shit. Oh, Roxy, good day, mate. What's going on? How was your stream, great man? Get day, mittens. Oh, awesome! Got some photos. I'd be keen to see it. Yes, it's a beautiful party Monday, friends. We're continuing work on these traps. Uh, the, whatever they're called, worm spat. We're on to the last one before we start looking at them as a whole and deciding what we want to do. Thanks, Leroy. Leroy Jenkins!
Nothing I can do to total eclipse of the heart. I'm about to crack 3,000 followers on YouTube, subscribers, whatever it is called on YouTube, I forget. But 2,990 people that follow me on YouTube. And actually all they're getting at the moment, the only content they're getting is me doing this. But I was thinking about doing some gaming content on there as well talking about last week or last stream that I was want to do a Kingdom Death campaign record that g'day TJ what's going on mate Now you may be wondering, yeah, board gaming, board gaming content, mate. Oh, look, mittens, it's not all about the views for me, mate. I make videos because I like making videos. Same with streaming, same with painting. Draxy's Celestial Model. Oh, oh, okay. Some good progress here, Drax. This is looking good. Um, redraw one part, redraw, mate. Oh, that's Hugo being a lunatic. <laughs> Uh, here we go, Draxy. Great stuff. There's a really impressive um, integration of, of the, the various elements. Yeah. Very cool, mate. This is looking good. Fuck, they're hard models to paint, eh? I, uh... Uh... I, I, I went backwards. <laughs> Trying to figure out... Backwards. How to paint those fucking things. I did it again I played with your heart I got lost in the game Ooh baby baby Ooh you think you're in love Got sent from above I'm not that innocent Bone would be the colour I would use for the bow stripey thumb Bone's a good neutral colour that can can add into a palette without necessarily making it to something. So yes, I would go for bone. Yo, yo, two bucks. What's going on? Oh, 
Can't wait. Can't wait. I'm hoping it's a dick pic. Is it a dick pic? <laughs> Good work, Wampa. I always love killing a... Uh Kill any character, it's always good, good fun. Oh, Honey Bunny, thank you for subscribing for four months. Wow, that's, uh, that's a long time. You know how they say uh, you should never meet your heroes? Look, I appreciate that you've met yours through this forum here on Party Mondays, and I hope that I haven't disappointed. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be King of Death at the moment. Um, is, is the main one I'm excited about making a, a video series for. One so I'd actually have some reason to have painted all my models. <laughs> Give me some impetus to paint some other ones, maybe. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think it's a really good um, episodic game that you can put into a, a video format and it works out quite well. Uh, it is it is a complicated game, yes. I like it though. Played about four campaigns, five campaigns. Oh, that's mad. I actually wanted to write a, a, a Dragonlance campaign set around that time of Verminard and the, the Red Dragon and stuff. That'd be awesome. Oh, thanks for subscribing on YouTube, Leroy. That's awesome, mate. Maybe we'll get close to 3,000 tonight. How good. Oh, some bits. Thanks, Mini MF. Little snowman, I think. Do you want to build a snowman? Come to live inside the hall. Never see you anymore. It's like you got away. We used to be best buddies, and now we're not. I wish you would tell me why. Do you want to build a snowman? I like to be a snowman. Okay, bye. Oh, Kitiara, she's a great character. So last uh, last week was it, or the week before on Party Monday, we had we had the great man Ben X Layton come on and have a chat, which was great to talk to another Australian streamer. Very cool. Are you playing? Are you playing that that mission or those those campaigns with players who've never read the books, or or are you have they read the books and you're like retelling those stories as in D and D form? I'm a bit perplexed. Cool.
Man, seven players is a lot of players to have in a D&D group. Fuck me. That is wild. That's impressive, mate. That's impressive stuff. So yeah, I was uh, I was contemplating trying to get some some special guests on for some Party Monday chats. Nothing, nothing of any uh, actual planned, concrete, special guests. But just inviting people on to have a chat on Party Monday. See how many of my uh, my friends would be interested. Mostly I'd, <laughs> mostly I'd bring uh, bring painting friends, but you never know. You're luck in a big city. Classic BNG. We could have it out about Matt Varnish once and for all. Other. It's just you and me. What are we gonna do? Do you wanna build a snowman? Don't have to build a snowman. I'll see if I can convince my good friend David to join us. Not David Potts, although I'm sure many fans of the show would love to have a conversation with David Potts and Big Deno on stream. Ah, Benny, happy party Monday to you, pal. What a great day it is. Thought I'd crack out the orange today. And the silver tie, a bit more professional. <laughs> Thanks, Mabari Throne, or Mabari Throne, Mabari, however you pronounce it. Thanks. It is very professional looking. Pro streamer, I am. There has been a lot of talk about Crusaders. So much so that Big Dino is about to throw the Crusader out the window. So we can stop talking about fucking Crusaders. Come on, Meg. What the fuck is Mabari throne? What is that? You're killing me. I don't know what that is. Let's have a look at this crusader. Yeah, I do need I do need to get my Zoolander angles going, hey. Oh, that's awesome, man. Shit, let's bring that up on stream and show off. Look, it's wonderful that I'm an inspiration to so many people. That's not the one we wanted to change. That one's Druxy's one. Look at this. That's Baller. Let's have a close-up look at this. Yes, very nice. I like the uh, 
I like the dust. That looks very good indeed. Oh, the shield's cool too. Hey Meg, do you want to get on Discord and have a chat? You don't have to. That's pretty, pretty cool, man. That's all. You, yeah, you should be, you should be chuffed with that, mate. I really like the the level of detail on uh, on the shield, like the scratches and the um, you know the spattering. That's really, really neatly done. The dust is is done really effectively. Doesn't look um, unrealistic. Hard to see from the photos uh, what the actual detail on the face is like, but I do feel like the face is getting a little bit lost in uh, in everything else. But yeah, really cool, man. What a legend. Yes. Wow. Lockdown. What a terrible thing. It is spattering, mate. Here, let me just go and see if I can find Meg to chat to on Discord. Where is Meg's? Oh, here, just go into your... into your art hangout, Megsy. If you want to have a chat. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah, let's do a quick show and tell because my Morrigan turned up today too. Here she is. I'm excited. Can you hear me? Hey, what's going on, Mix? Can you hey, hear me? Hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you, Meg. I can hear you fine. Let's try that again. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Great. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just on my phone. I've never had both a Twitch stream and a Discord <laughs> phone at once. So Tech Wizard. Everyone, this is this is uh, my friend Meg from uh, Geelong. Is that right? Geelong now? Ge Geelong now, yeah, yeah. Uh, you may you may all know her from um, being a very good painter. Taught me everything I know, didn't you Meg? I mean, I taught you some of it at least. I convinced you. Well, really, what I did was I convinced you to leave uh, table sock painting kind of behind, you which did. was something that you swore up and down you would never do. That's true. And then you know, just converted you to a display painter, pretty much. So you, you know, yeah, I'm like, yes, I'm the reason you are See, where you are today. If that's taught, what you're getting at. You taught me everything I know. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yes, Mini Meth, that is in Meg Maples, yes. My friend Meg, the superstar. Yes. Who's just started getting, getting back into some kick ass painting, haven't you, Meg? I have, yeah. It's, um, well, yeah, I kind of had a hiatus there for a while because I, I moved and um, didn't have any space for painting, but now I'm getting back into it and it's a lot of fun and I get to uh, run art therapy classes during the week at uh, Gamer, which was started by Paris Conte, who some of you might know. So um, you you, yeah. you um, also run D&D &D for a job, is that right? I do, yeah. So I get to do miniature painting as a job. I get to, like, I get to teach others how to do that. Um, I am a professional dungeon master two, three times a week, and I also facilitate therapeutic video game sessions. That would have to be the biggest stitch up of a job that I've ever heard in my life, hey. I mean, look, like it's it's, it's pretty cool. It's <laughs> a lot of fun. I'm up. very lucky that Paris wanted me to come work for him for the last two years, and he just you know finally convinced me to do it. No, it's pretty cool. I am uh, couldn't think of a nicer person for it to happen to, Megzi. Thanks. Um, but when when do you reckon I got better painting, uh, better at painting than you? Where we at what time was that? Probably last year, right? Ah, uh, like, you know, <laughs> maybe, you know, a week after you really, like, nose to the grindstone, <laughs> you're just basically like, look, I'm going to blow everybody out of the water. No, I'm just quicker than everyone, that's all. Do you see how long David spent on his last, uh, on his last fucking model? He spent, like, 30 hours on that box art. 
Mate, if I had 30 hours to paint a model, I could paint about six, I reckon. Crazy. Well, I mean, but you you do you do have thirty hours to paint a model. You just That's choose true. to paint six models in that thirty hours, where That's he's true. choosing to paint the one model in the thirty hours. And I feel like I kind of fall somewhere in between, between the two of you. Yeah. I'm not necessarily the fastest, but I'm also. Like, if I get to 30 hours, like, that's just, that's a fuck ton of time. Sorry, can I cuss on here? Yeah, absolutely, mate. Just don't drop the C-bomb. I've tried to avoid dropping the C-bomb on here, so. Um, okay. <laughs> so all the C-bombs. <laughs> did, um, how long did Magneto take you, do you reckon? I honestly, I have no idea mm. anymore, because that was a while ago. That was, like, almost 10 years ago that I painted mm. that. It was a fucking age. That one was third crystal brush or something, wasn't it? Yep. Pretty yeah, gold. Crystal Brush. It won a gold in, I think it was the large figure category. Um, and yeah, it, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how long that took. Pretty cool. It took how long it needed to until it was done. Mm. This is a very cool model, this one. I don't know if you're looking at, on the stream at all. This is Morrigan from Journey in Miniatures. She turned up today. What a bit of let, let me just uh, take the phone away from my face and I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Hang on one sec. Uh, no, I can't see it. She's probably smaller than I expected, actually. Um, oh, yeah, I think I know which one you're talking about, though. Um, it's the one that which... the, the Morrigan's sitting on the throne. Yes, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Great model. I'm looking forward to painting it. Maybe we'll do that next, friends. We'll see what everyone thinks. I'm, I'm getting ready for QMHE. It's coming up in uh, in about four weeks, Mick. So. Cool. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just putting together a few bits and pieces, just, you know, four big dioramas, 20-odd models, just normal stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, so how heavy, like, the, the big <laughs> diorama that you just did, like, how heavy is that? Uh, like if, I feel like it should weigh as much as a coffee table. It's pretty, it's, it's weighty, um, but a lot of the, a lot of the framework was in polystyrene, the XPS foam, so it's not that heavy. G'day, Danzeron! Um, oh, it's probably five to ten keggers, maybe. Yeah, like that's. I mean, you know, that's pretty. That's pretty hefty. It's pretty mm. hefty. Yeah. Like that's that's like ten, twelve pounds. You know, for people not <laughs> using the sensible weight measures. For for all of those knob ends, it's it's middle of the night for them, Meg. Most most of the Americans don't get on my stream at this time. There's a couple of lunatics that do, but yeah, most of them get on my Sunday morning stream. I mean, um, you never know. You might get some other rando American just popping up. Sea minerals, you crazy kid. Yeah, Wamp Wampa is a lunatic. Wampa gets up at, I don't know, 3 a.m. or something, goes to the gym before he starts work. He's a, he's a lunatic. That's, yeah, at three, like, 3 in the morning, that's way too early. It, it, is, like, it is like 4 a.m. for you at the moment, isn't it, Wampa? Like, like, I get up at 5 to go to the gym. Hmm. So, uh, Megzi, let's, uh, let's talk about Crystal... Dragon. Yes. <laughs> what are we going to discuss about it? The big question mark that's hanging in the air about whether or not Campo's going to be fucked. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? There's nothing really to talk about. I just thought it'd be good to get you on and have a chat. Well, look, the, the, what we can talk about is that currently Trent and I and company are planning on Crystal Dragon running next year um, at CanCon, which has like i mean i would love for it to to go ahead however we are conscious of the fact that um you know the the current situation in sydney and in new south wales could spread to canberra and could ruin those plans so we are also trying to come up with a way to basically host crystal dragon including some classes um online just so that way we don't have to go two years in a row where we we can't run it yep um, it's a shame we obviously won't have any international guests this year, which is a real shame because we were on a pretty good run there. We had we had uh, Roman Gruber come along, we had uh, Craftworld, we had Kaha and Pietrick from Nico Galaxy. Um, yeah. And I actually had lined up Sergio for 2021, believe it or not. So. Well, yeah, and then I had asked uh, Michael Pizarski if he wanted to come at some point, and he said yes. So. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's what a shame. What a shame. I know, I know, and everything's just on hold. So hopefully we can get 
you know, people coming back and visiting um, whenever post-COVID times will allow that. So in the meantime, we will just have to rely on our homegrown talents. Yes. Like yourself, Trent, uh, and maybe you, David, and possibly you. Sebastian, and whoever else, like if anybody else out there <laughs> thinks that they have something that they could teach in a two-hour seminar, I am more than happy to talk to you about doing a class or two through Crystal Dragon. And yourself, of course, Meg. You should include yourself, unless you're an honorary Australian these days. What was that? You're an honorary Australian these days, mate, so you can call yourself homegrown talent. Well, but, I mean, and yes, I am Aussie, but I'm not really homegrown, like, because I, I mean, I was cultivated in America <laughs> and part of, partially Europe, and then I made my way to Australia. True. So, and then I brought all that knowledge to help, you know, grow the talent within Oz, like you and David. Uh, well, I think you probably did a better job with David than you did with me, um, because... Like, you guys have your own strengths and weaknesses, your own, your own you know, what unique a, brand and, and set of skills. What a lovely... And, I mean, I, you know, I can't, I can't sit here and take credit for, for everything that you guys have done. I'm just, I feel like I was maybe just the catalyst that got the two of you interested in developing your, um, your talent and, and figuring out where your interests lie. What a lovely diplomatic response from you, Meg. Everyone's got strength, she says. Both of, you, both of you are my children. I love you <laughs> equally. You just have different gifts that you offer to the rest of the world. That's true. I do I do hear I worship David on, on my stream, by the way. Like, every time I talk about him, I'm just like, he's the best. <laughs> he is the best. You're the best. No, Dave's definitely We're all the best. awesome. Dave is definitely the best, though. He's a fucking legend. Um, anyone in the chat got any questions for Meg while we've got her for a very brief time? Now's your chance. You may not get another chance to talk to the great Meg Maples, former Prime yeah. Press studio I trainer, may, professional I may trainer. Need, sorry, I may need you to read out any questions that pop up. I can do that, um, Yeah, just because I, I'm, like, talking on my phone, you know, like... I'm happy, I'm happy a, to A regular that, phone call. So we've, had, so a couple, we've had a couple of peanuts come on and ask, how do I get good? And, uh, look, come on now. Only serious questions, you, you, you doofuses, come on. I mean, look, I'm, I'm okay with silly questions too. All right, here's a good, here's a good question. Frog Jim has just asked, was I a good pupil or did I piss around at the back of the class being a, being a pest? I, I didn't catch all of that. What was that? What, was I a good pupil of yours in your classes or did I muck about at the back of the room like a pest? Ah, uh, look, look, I think there's maybe a little bit of, of both happening. Um... <laughs> You know, Trent is a big personality, and he likes to talk, and he likes to, to be amongst people. Um, but when he is interested in a topic, he kind of hones right in on that, and um, he pays close attention, and then he goes and he tries the thing that he's just learned about. So, um, yeah, look, he's definitely, like, you, you haven't been the worst student I've had. Well, obviously wasn't trying hard enough then. Uh... <laughs> Ben X Layton had would like to ask, did you uh, <laughs> did you teach me to manage my ego? Uh, did I teach you how to manage your ego? Yes. And as if, in, if, as if in, you didn't, do you think maybe... you that you are the absolute fucking best at everything that you do, and you are your own number one fan because nobody else in this world will be? Yeah. Yes. Uh here we go. Here's a legitimate question. Are there any techniques that still scare you, for lack of a better word? No. No, there's nothing that scares me. Um, there are techniques that I have not mastered or, for whatever reason, don't click in my brain, like wet blending I struggle with, um, which a lot of people find funny because I do two brush blending, and a lot of people think two brush blending is wet blending, but it's not. They're two very different techniques. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, like I understand intellectually the concept behind wet blending, but getting my paint and my brush to do it adequately, I just, I can't. I find it frustrating. Mm. Um, the other thing that I, I would eventually like to learn at some point is 
when i was trying when i was taught non metal metallics it was in the very cartoony american style that was being painted in the late ninety's early two thousand since non metal metallics has progressed to what it is today i haven't learned how to paint that um and so because of that i have stuck with true metals i also prefer painting true metals um and i feel like that is actually quite rare to come across not only a display painter but somebody who has worked as a professional display painter who do who does true metals most display painters that are doing commissions or box art use non metal metallics uh how do you feel about like the michael pozarski the uh the hyper realistic style of non metallic metal how do you feel about them um so i mean i've seen michael's and uh kirill's work in person uh over in europe and then i've also seen it the like the same pieces uh in photographs and it has the benefit of looking really really awesome in photos in person it does look different it's and it's not like it's not a huge difference it's just that it's something oh i don't know i don't know if they're doing any photo editing like post editing to really like bump up the saturation and the contrast level um so i don't know what their process is but yeah it's just the it, it, it does look a bit different in person rather than in photos and i feel like that style of painting really is for online photography mm. um to really highlight that as opposed to really enjoying the finished look in person whereas i'd rather have it the other way around i would rather have a client who sees a photo is really happy with the photo but then gets the model in hand and it's just blown away mm. by what they're getting in hand because the photos never do it justice does that make sense it does um i i saw kirill's and land's work a couple of couple of years on the trot um and uh, I remember the first time I saw Land's um, work. It was it was um, one of the Carl Rudick box arts um, that he had on display, and he, he handed it to me when I was down at his store. He's like, "Here you go, have a have a hold of this." And I was like, "Fucking don't let me fucking hold it, man! I'm gonna drop this shit." Oh my god! I was like pinging really hard, but I didn't drop it. So, bully for me. But uh, when you when you look at it in the hand, th there's almost like this sense of unrealism to it. Like it's it's so. Um, yeah, just, just crazy, but you, you can definitely, yeah. you can definitely see, um, why it photographs as well as it does, but there's something yes. about it that doesn't quite read true when you, when you hold it in your hand, which doesn't devalue the insane skill level required to do it. I don't think it's just, no, no, different. not at all. Like that's still my brain. Look, my brain can't work that way. Or I, well, I mean, it can, I just haven't taught it to work that way yet. And, and I would love to learn how to recreate those effects and, and to think about my light physics on a metallic surface in such a way that I could just do that on any piece. Um, but yeah, it does, I don't know, it's that style of painting is for an express purpose. Not that that's good or bad, that's just something to be aware of when you are choosing the techniques that you are using um on a particular piece yep so yeah. next next question what uh what are most beginners missing that holds them back what are most beginners missing that hold them back because you've taught a lot of beginner classes you taught a lot of classes to, to people that are yeah. know, trying to improve most yeah, most of what I teach are beginner classes, just because I feel like nobody else really teaches beginner classes. Um, I do, but only because I can't take anyone else, can't teach anyone else anything, because I don't know anything else other than what beginners do. So, mostly because I took your class. Clearly, yeah, you're still just a beginner. <laughs> um, so, I, like, I don't know, there, there's a couple of different answers that I can give. One is that when I get people in my classes, they tend to be painters who have, you know, learned the GW style of painting, mm. essentially. They've gone in, they've gotten their models, they've gotten all the colors that the staff at GW say that they should get um, in order to, you know, just basically paint by number. And so being able to think about color as color and not a specific name on a pot, that's, 
that's a hurdle that a lot of people are missing as beginners. So when I teach classes, I don't teach with Vallejo, Games Workshop, Reaper, any of the typical brand names. And instead, I encourage people to think about the colors they're using and how they would describe those colors. So using proper art terminology and introduction to color theory. Uh, once you get more comfortable with mixing colors, then really like, the world is at your fingertips with painting. You know, I still use, I still, in my head, I think I need a bleach bane or a, or a fucking, you know, scorch brown. In my head when I'm like, I need to pick out these colors from the Games Workshop background that I've had. It's just the way I think well, about color. But I mean, like David does the same, mm. right? Like he's using pretty much game paints all the time. Yep. Um, and, you know, he gets spectacular results as well. So it's not to say that that can't work. It's just that I sometimes wonder if that hobbles people a little too much and stifles creativity. And so I, that's why I encourage when people come to my classes to try to use the paints that I bring with me because the, I, I teach with artist acrylics and I even have a limited palette while I'm teaching the beginner classes and I show people how I mix colors and even go through color mixing exercises and have people make their own color wheels like all of that stuff is done in class just to get people more comfortable with the idea that they can create their own colors hopefully one day i'll get comfortable with doing that uh here's here's a good one that you and i'd probably be able to rant about for a while hobby or hobby community pet peeves i'll start you off yeah. because it's fucking it's one of my pet peeves why why are they just why are they going to be gatekeepers? Why are they going to be dickheads? Like, just be nice to other people, you fucks. I don't know if I told you this one right, but I'm going to tell you the story again for everyone in the chat. They'll love this. But I went into, uh, I think it was Evia Metal a while back. And mm. uh, this guy's posted a question. He's like, oh, hey, guys, um, I just wanted to get some thoughts on, on Matt Varnish because, I, I, you know, I, I want to use a Matt Varnish, but, you know, I'm worried it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the way my model looks. Right, and so I was thinking to myself, oh, you know, mate, most people, Matt Varnish, or whatever, it's just just a thing that you can use. It's like another tool, right? You don't have to use it, but you can. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make your model look exactly the same. But if you're aware of what it's gonna do, then you can you can work around that, right? And this guy comes in there and he's like, I'll tell you right now, mate, no professional painter uses Matt Varnish. And I said, Are you, <laughs> are you sure about that, mate? Are you sure that there's no professional painter that uses matte varnish? And and his response to me, like calling him out, and this I'll never forget this, and I've told this story fucking 20 times, I'll tell another 20 times. He goes, uh, look, mate, I think I would know because Alfonso Geraldez stayed at my house. That, that was his response. He goes, yeah, yeah, for Crystal Brush a couple of years ago, mate, Alfonso, he stayed at my house. I was like, well, uh -huh. I'm, I'm glad he stayed at your house, mate. I'm, I'm glad that gives you the authority on how every professional painter doesn't use matte varnish. You absolute fucking painter. Uh, <laughs> so that, that, that kind of, like, that starts out with one of my pet peeves and really, like, segues into another. Yeah. It's just, it's just like, Which, which on, I man. think you knew because, like, this just seems too perfectly set up. <laughs> Yeah, okay, gatekeeping in, in the community, because that's essentially what we're talking about here. Um, look, just... Don't be fuckwits to each other, right? How hard is it, eh? Yeah, like, that's it. I mean, we're at the end of the day with... yeah, we, we, Yes, we have people who are doing this professionally. We have people who are competing. We have people, you know, that are going, you know, head-to-head, -head, I guess, at these competitions. Um but honestly, like even even if you're working and you're competing in miniature painting, at the end of the day, you're still painting fucking toys. Little toy soldiers. Right? Like, <laughs> just don't take this shit so seriously. Enjoy what you do. Enjoy what other people do. Let other people enjoy what they're doing, regardless of their skill level. Like, just don't don't be a dick. That'd be a fuck with I. It's so good. Just yeah, like it's simple. It's. The, 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 the thing that pissed me off about that, right, is, 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 is yeah. there's so many different ways that you can you can learn stuff, right? And there's so many different, you know, approaches to doing stuff. It, I, I just hate it when people come in and be like, you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. That just, like, devalues yeah. art in general. It's like, 
Yeah, mate. Right. If everyone just did it that way, no one would fucking do anything new. It's like, yeah. learn your own lessons, mate. Just say, in my experience, it doesn't work, but you should try it for yourself. Like that, that should be the default response to just about any question that comes up on any fucking forum. And instead you get, you get peanuts like that guy going, Alfonso Geraldez stayed at my house. So I think I would know. I think I would know. Yeah. And then he came swinging with up. I want to, I want to, um, highly commended at crystal brush. I was like, cool, man. <laughs> Sweet. I, I did. I did. I, I, I want a gold at crystal brush, and I use fucking matte varnish. Yeah. Like. I, I I I didn't I didn't keep going. I was like, all right, my guy. If that if that is the fence you're gonna die on, I scoop. You, you got it, mate. You win. No one uses like, matte okay. varnish. <laughs> so like going back to the metallics though, right? Like this is this is one of my pet peeves with with metallics is that. I can't tell you how many times over the near 20 years I've been painting that I've been told, if you don't know non-metal metallics, you will never win anything, you will never be successful, you will never go on to be a professional, you will never have a career in this, and I'm like, well, bitches, please. Like, I mean, I don't paint NMM, and I I did fine for myself while I was pursuing this as a full-time career. Like, you know? Just let people paint what they want to paint and how they're comfortable painting it. And yet there's still this perception that you need to learn how to paint non-metal metallics in order to be anyone in miniature painting. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. Why? Just paint whatever you want. Who cares? Paint whatever you want. Just have fun. And have, thank just you. paint whatever you want. Just thank do you. it. Just don't, just don't be a fuck with other people, hey? Just, that's all it is. Just have fun. Yeah, look, I mean. Enjoy your painting. I'll learn that. I've learned that lesson way too late in life. Mm. Like, I'm glad that I've learned it. But, yeah, it took me a long time to get there. Um, Yes, at the end of the day, just enjoy what you do. Be a good person. Don't be a dick to other people. Like, that's that's what we should all aim for. What a great, what a great lesson. What a great lesson. All right, one more question, then I got to go. Okay. Uh, Koshi Pops has, isn't a fan of non-metallic metal. Good for you, champion. I, I agree with you, Space Toy. I paint non-metallic metal because it's fun. It's nice to um, explore different techniques. Mate, I'm a, I'm a dick when I'm giving feedback because nobody gives feedback properly. People are just... It's it's a mutual wank fest out there in the world of miniature painting, right? Someone needs to tell the truth, and that person is Big Demo. So, yeah, like, this is the thing. I don't ever give unsolicited feedback because... And, I mean, this even happened the last time I gave sort of unsolicited feedback to David <laughs> in Evier Metal, was people automatically came at me and were like, bitch, please, who do you think you are sitting there critiquing Mr. The great, Dave the great Dave Collar. You know, they love him on there, too. They love him. Space <laughs> Marines and all that. And I'm just like, um, like, he came to my class seven years ago when I kind of, like, He's my boy. For he's a long my, time, and I've taught him some things, and I still have advice. Like that's that's who I think I am. But yep. But like I get, I I will legit get hate mail if I critique people online um, without them asking. Yep. And even when they do ask, they tend like the original poster tends to message me privately and ask for the feedback, but want me to post it publicly. So I feel like I have to put this whole fucking huge disclaimer about. Look, I've known this person for this many years. You know, they've been to my classes before. I've taught them all these things. Now I'm going to give them feedback. Anybody have a problem with that? Take it up with them. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's just, it's so much trouble. So, yeah, I just, like. All right, final question. Real quick one. This is a good question. Uh, yeah. What technical lesson did you learn that made the biggest step up in your painting? I think that's a good question. Good Ooh, final question. That is a good question. I actually talk about what it was for me. It was your class. I've talked about that. Yeah. I talked about a moment in your class when you showed me how I'd highlighted a fucking orc's bicep incorrectly. And I was like, you know what? I am an absolute fuckwit. And yeah, that was that was the moment where I started on the path I'm on. Lorn Cerise, this is my, my good friend Meg, is on the chat at the moment. She's about to leave. So. Um... So, yeah, like, I mean, I can't tell you how many moments like that I've had over the years of learning how to paint, right? Is just shit that once somebody points it out to you, you're like, oh, my God, that's so fucking obvious. Why am I doing it wrong this whole time? Yeah. But it's just because, it, I don't know, it's just not intuitive. If you aren't 
and everything mainly has to do around light physics, really. Like, even with what you're talking about with learning how to shade and highlight a bicep correctly, that's learning how light is going to fall when the arm is positioned in such a way and you've got a bicep that's well defined. You know, like there's a whole, a whole bunch of variables that are taken into account. But sometimes you just need somebody to go, nope, this is the way you do it and this is why. And you watch them and it looks better and you're just like, of course. And you have that light bulb moment, everything clicks, falls into place. Mm. And yet you just wonder how you got through life before. That's one of that's one of the uh, the four stages of competence. You need an external uh, yep. external influence, which is why I always tell people to ask for feedback because you need external influence to highlight sometimes when you don't know what you're doing wrong because you're in unconscious incompetence. Thanks for coming yes. on, Meg. You're one of my heroes. Did you know that? I am. Yeah. Aw, thanks. I appreciate that. I talk about it all the time, mate. Wouldn't be where I am today um, without you. So. So I didn't really give any answer to the last question. So for me, I guess the moment would be, because I remember it so clearly, Jeremy Barmont was staying with me in Texas when he came to teach at a convention out there. And we were having a, a painting afternoon, and he was like, he wasn't actively teaching me. We were just painting at my kitchen table and talking. And um, he then got up to get something to drink. He came back and watched over my shoulder as I was painting. And he, he just, he's very direct when he asks questions when <laughs> he's watching someone. And he goes, why did you do that? Why did you put that shadow there? And I'm like, because that's where it belongs. Okay, well, why did you blend it that way? Because I need a smooth blend, obviously. He's like, but why? What about the leg position there and the light that you've got sketched in everywhere else means that you need to have that shadow blended in that way? And... I couldn't give him an answer again. This is learning light physics, but he just said, why don't you just put a black shadow there and just call it done? And I'm like, because that's just like, that would be horrifying. And why would I just put like a hard line shadow there? And he's like, why wouldn't you? And then he just took my brush and the mini out of my hand, did it before I could say anything and handed it back to me. And I was just like, holy <laughs> fuck, it works. <laughs> it's just... I mean, but that's what it took. It took him to, like, not just question me, question me directly to make me think about it, and then just do it on my model before I could, like, my brain could even freak out about it. Because this was going to be a competition piece for me that I was entering. And he just, like, as far as I was concerned prior to watching him, he just fucked up my mini, right? But then, no, he handed it back, and I just looked at it, and I was like, that, that, okay, yep, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly where that belongs. Now I see it, because it's done. So, um, yeah, I, that was more the, what I took away from that lesson was be confident in placing your highlights in your shadows. Don't overthink it. Go with your gut sensation about where that should go. Um, because as soon as you start overthinking things, that's when you make mistakes. But if you just do it, just switch off your brain, let your subconscious take over and just do it. Whack those hard shadows in, whack some highlights in, and then blend if you need to. That was probably the most um, revolutionary lesson that I got from somebody. I remember you doing that to Gav in one of your classes. I remember yeah. you, you, you just grabbed it and you were like, why don't you do this, Gav? And you just fucking jammed some paint on there. And he was like, <laughs> He nearly yep. had a heart attack. It was the best. I love seeing Gav yep. under pressure. Um, Honey Bunny has shared, Honey Bunny's another lovely um, miniature painter in Melbourne uh, has said shout out to all the females in the painting community so represent feminists mm -hmm. feminists all so she's doing some great stuff actually you should follow her on Instagram Honey Bunny okay. I'll, send, I'll send you the link uh, yes, Meg's, Meg's socials just look up Arcane Paintworks friends if you want to know where Meg is you'll find her on Facebook although probably not worth going on there check out the grams mostly and you're not really active on socials these days much are you Meg? Um, I mean, not as much as I used to be. I'm trying. I'm trying to get that to be a more regular thing, but that also just depends on how much time in the week I have to paint at the moment. And I am working and also going to school full time and also trying to like have a life outside of all that. So, um, but I do also have a Discord server, and you can find a link to that that was posted over the weekend um, on my social media, which is Arcane Paintworks fan page on Facebook 
Um, so if you guys want to interact with me there, I tend to be a little bit more active um, on Discord these days. Yes. So, yeah. And Max. then otherwise, yeah, I'm going to try and really start updating Instagram a bit more um, as I have more photos. Meg's uh, uh, managing another one of my discords for me, so thanks, Meg. Appreciate that. Um, I just posted Bunny's uh, <laughs> Instagram page. In the chat. I got about I, I got so many people asking me to do a Discord. I'm like, nah, couldn't be fucked. And so you just, look, just, <laughs> just bring them over to mine and just share. It. So I I just, like, that's whatever. what I'm doing with Ben. I'm, I, can, I can change it to Meg and Trent's art hangout. Like, I'm doing, I'm or doing just, it. like the fucking art hangout. Like, let's just. Call it that. I'm doing it with another guy, Ben, and he's, he loves it because I take all the credit and send people there, and then he's the one who has to do all the work, so it's great stuff. Yeah, sweet. Totally for it. You're a ledge, Meg. All right, I'll talk to you later. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. All right, friends. Now's my friend Meg Maples. Great painter, great human. So we'll head on back to uh, Party Monday, continue painting this little dude. She's a very, very kind, wonderful person that I have a lot of time for. Has done a lot of uh, really positive things for the painting community in Australia. And, uh, yeah, I'm, um, very big fan of her. I don't think she's a very big fan of me. I'm a pest, but. That's okay. Uh, so while I was just chatting away, I was just mucking around with this, this model and continuing the interesting experience I'm having painting these models with a red base coat. I think it's, I think it's looking okay. I'm so good. There is, a, there is a name I can get behind. Uh, yeah, so I was talking about that this is the start of the stream. Uh, there's just a slightly different aesthetic to each of these. Like I'm, I'm going to try and keep them looking similar, but I want each of the metals to have a slightly different feel. I want each of the greens to feel slightly different. Just want them to just feel a little bit askew. So uh, I don't know if I answered Mini Man's, but yes, that is that is Meg's page. I know. Thanks, Hellfire. I did. I did know that. I mean, I saw it on my Discord today. <laughs> Big shout out to my friend Ben for managing that Discord for me. Thanks, mate. And Bunny. Thanks, friends. <laughs> so, yeah, if you don't know Meg um, and her background, she was a privateer press. Uh, thank you. She was a privateer press painter um, for about three years, I think. Um, prior to that, she was a, a pro professional display painter, did it for a career for a while. Um, and then she uh, went into teaching classes for a while. Um, based herself out of Australia and um, attended a few international conventions, taught classes all across Europe. So, yeah. One of the greats. Uh, I, I unboxed the Journeyman Miniatures um, Morrigan, which arrived today. 
Um, probably going to be the next project I do after the Roman Tribune, I think. But yeah, so Meg was the initial inspiration for me getting into display painting a number of years ago. And um, yeah, I bought one of her models. She's, um, without Meg, I wouldn't be here today, friends. So, pull one out for my girl Meg. She definitely thinks I'm a fucking pest, though. Which is okay because I am a pest. Two bucks, what are you posting here, mate? Is this, oh, the face, oh, cool. Oh, very nice, very nice indeed. Oh, that's a great, great model, mate. You should be really proud of that. Um, there's, a, there's a few minor things I could critique uh, overall, but I'm not going to because. I think you should just appreciate that you've done a magnificent job. And, uh, well done. Once again, Deno inspiring the masses with the Crusader. It's incredible stuff. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm good. I think people were teasing me before because I was too mean on my feedback, so... Now, honestly, it's just aesthetic. It's just aesthetic choices, things I like doing differently. And um, I don't know that the feedback's going to contribute anything that, um, in terms of the technical capability, is, is a value. It's more subjective. So I don't think it's, uh, <laughs> don't think it's worth sharing that much. Uh, I don't have any. The only, I've got that. I've got that uh, Roman Tribune, I don't have any other Crusaders in the pile of but I could buy one, there's a cool dude in Australia who does models for, um, for I can buy in Australia, names, Spec Mod Model Products, he keeps a good selection of historical, for fantasy models I go to Stonebeard Gym, so, yes. Yes. <laughs> Alfonso Geraldine stayed at my house. I love that story. Fuck, I will forever remain etched in my memory. I can't tell you his name at all. Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> nah, he wasn't from Canberra. He was an American, mate. Because Alfonso Geraldo stayed at his house. Oh, mate. He'd be ropeable. Absolutely ropeable. Look, the thing about it is, friends, the thing about it, I'm not, I, don't want, I don't want to go on another rant, but... There's many ways to skin a fucking cat, alright? Drust, thank you for subscribing on YouTube. There's many fucking ways to skin a cat. And it's the narrow, the narrow thinking, the narrow-minded, you have to do it this way. Thanks, Lauren Cerise. Or is it Lauren? Sorry. Yeah, I have a YouTube, mate. All these streams go to my YouTube, but I've also done some painting videos. Which is a condensed version of what I'm doing here, where I actually narrate what I'm doing properly, instead of the, just the mindless dribble that comes out of my mouth on the stream.
look, Lauren Cerise, if it was Lauren, then great. If it's Lauren, also great. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Now, I have to say that for everyone that's on the stream tonight, thank you for joining, appreciate you all. There was a moment that happened on my stream the other day, which I've been reflecting on. Now, I don't remember exactly which stream it was. I feel like it was Wednesday night's stream, because we had a crazy Wednesday night. I was like, fucking shit flying everywhere. Gregory was going nuts, it was just crazy. But there was this chap who came on and he, he made a comment about, uh, it was a demeaning comment towards women. And, oh, thanks mate. Uh, and it was sort of like a, it was a, it was not a, it was not a terrible comment, right? Oh, thank you for subscribing on YouTube. I know that because it's, one of the things I see. Anyway, to talk about this chap again, I've been reflecting on it since it happened because I feel like I could have done more to educate this chap. My immediate response was I was a little bit taken aback by the comment. And I think I was like, hmm. I felt like in my head I said, I don't think you can say that, mate, but I don't think I actually said that um, in as many words. So I regret not being more forthright in my communication with that guy, but we we're fortunate that we had Gregory in the chat and Gregory stepped up and delivered a great response, which I'm very proud of him for. And I hope to say that to him on the stream at some point soon, where he said, yeah, I was, I was a bit shocked. I was a bit shocked. And look, just, just to give some context, um, for everyone that hasn't isn't familiar with what happened, that, that I'll assume he was a young man, came in and said, uh, women are bitches or something like that about, in response to a comment that someone had made, possibly myself, um, and it was just inappropriate. Um, and he got called out on it, right, by, by Gregory, which I appreciate. And he, and he came back and said, oh, I'm just really upset because I've just had a really bad breakup, blah, 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 blah. So, um, shouts out to Gregory for jumping to not just call that guy out on his behaviour, but also offer help. That's a, that's a magnificent response. Thank you, Axel Castellan. Castellan. But it just made me think about how I will respond next time if there is another time where that occurs, which I'm sure, unfortunately, there will be a time where that occurs. Gregory is the best, yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Merlin. It's, it's a bit of an experiment, mate, so. So I guess I just wanted to say um, that I've learned from that experience, and I hope next time something similar occurs, that my response is a little bit more uh, quick and in keeping with my values and what I believe to be important in this world. And I can summarise my perspective on life. It's don't be a fuckwit to other people. So um, hopefully I get an opportunity to correct that mistake in future. But I do feel for that uh, young man and what he's going through. Um, I have nothing but incredible women in my life, and I hope that that continues to be the case. Yeah, that was all it required, and I, I, I just, I was a bit uh, disconcerted by the fact that I hadn't really dealt with that before. Because most of the people that come onto my stream are fucking genuinely great people. I don't think we've ever had any really, 
anything that really has required being calling out other than a gentle nudge, that was probably the first time. Yeah, I, and again, I just I think Gregory's response was was just such a good response, right? He, he didn't he didn't go, "Hey, mate, you're a fuckwit. You can't talk like that," which would have just you know antagonised the situation. He just said, "Hey, man, um, is everything okay?" You know, we don't uh, we don't need to talk like that. But is is there something I can do to help? That's just a, that's just a fantastic response, and yeah something I hope I've, I've learned from and will be able to deliver in future. Yep. It was, it was just such a compassionate response. I'm very good at a lot of things, right? But I'm not, I'm not great uh, at compassion, empathy. I struggle with those things in general. And a lot of experiences I've had in the last few years has helped me those things, the empathy. I mean, even just what happened with my cat the other, the other month was one that forced me to reflect and change my experience with my wife and so on. So it's a never ending journey, friends. But I think it's important that you get feedback. G'day, Voladuka. Um, look, mate, it's, it's kind of an underpainting. Um, what it is, is uh, I just sprayed everything pink and then I thought I'd try and paint it with everything starting pink. Um, here's, the, here's the other ones that I've done so far with the pink starting. Yeah. Yeah, look, I, it, it's just, it was a, it was, I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days, however long it was, however long ago it was. I can't remember if it was Wednesday's stream or, or yesterday's stream. I feel like it was Wednesday's. Um, yeah, I just I just kept thinking, wow, what a great way to handle that situation and what a, what a magnificent lesson for me in my life to take a stand on that sort of behaviour and, but in, in a way that is compassionate and And it sucks that we're still in a position in society where we have to have these sorts of conversations where we can't just not be fuckwits to each other. Um, but still work to be done. And hopefully we can work on it together. Uh, what was Meg saying about colours? Um, are you talking about when she talked about her experience with Jeremy Abonnement Taboul? Or are you talking about another... Um, another thing she talked about. Ah, cool. Um, what she was talking about is the way that people think about colours. So when you start um, learning how to paint via the Games Workshop School of Painting, the way that people tend to start thinking about things is by going um, the Games Workshop recipe. You start off with a, um, uh, I'm trying to think of some Games Workshop color names. Start off with a Rhinox hide and then highlight up with Vernon Brown and then shade it with a chestnut ink or whatever the fuck the colors are called these days, I don't remember. There's, there's value in that, right? Because you start to learn some of the process, some of the techniques around highlighting, shading creating contrast in volumes etc and it gives you an easy way to learn those things without necessarily teaching you some of the other things so what Meg's trying to say is that um, 
the Games Workshop colours, the colours that come in a bottle, the names of the colours, um, is the wrong way to think about things. The right way to think about things is think about what are the properties that I want this colour to have. And so when we talk about properties, we're talking about things like saturation, value, and hue. So how bright do I want this colour? Um, you know, how intense do I want this colour? Etc. So she's basically just saying challenge the way that you're thinking about colours and don't just get stuck in. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's experiences is different um, in how they get into the hobby. Mine was certainly the exact thing that Meg described, and I still to this day am like, oh, where's my bleach bone or whatever colour I want? Um, yeah, she's a good egg, man. Got a lot of time for her. Loves a jibber, though. A bit like me. Loves to have a jibbertron. Just blub, 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 blub. Whenever she teaches a class in Brisbane, she comes up to my house and stays with me. And we'll just be like, blub, 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 blub. Get a flick. Um... Yeah, mate, that's that's uh, often the case, is you you realise you need less colours and you can do things with yeah, limited palettes. Uh, the, the, it's interesting that when I think to myself I need a bleach bone in this situation, it's rarely because I'm like, I want that specific colour. It's more because I'm thinking about the type of colour that I want, what properties I want it to have, and the colour that I think is what I want is bleach bone. So I'm... I may be being slightly facetious when I say I still do it exactly that way. I don't think about things exactly that way these days. I'm reaching for a bone that has similar properties to that colour. And I just still think about that colour in those terms. What's going on, Flickster? You superstar? Hey, mate, I got a, I, I set up my... Uh, my. What did I set up? No, I don't think I set up anything. I did, uh, I did fuck all. I did fuck all. I meant to do something on my on my on my ghost host, which everyone should sign up for because it's the best. I need to set up I need to set up my uh, social post and my sub count and that sort of stuff. Have you just got some default ones I can just copy paste into my into my generic command section, Flickster? Come on, son. Hook a brother up. Yeah, I think it's a common a common thing to be excited about trying new power. I still get excited about trying paint ranges and shit all the time. Yes, spinny wheel. Is it gonna be ready for Saturday, four days time? Because that's when my first my next um, thing is. So ideally we'll aim for Saturday. Thanks, bud make it up and this guy's got a friggin tail and the tail has a has a spout wow <laughs> you're probably right I'm going to pretend it's a tail. And he's got these fat flaps in here that I really don't want to have to paint because they're hard to get to. So yes, next uh, next stream. I'm hoping we're going to finish this guy. Or I might I might even just finish this guy because I really want to start my my Roman Tribune bust. So I think we're actually going to start that on Wednesday night stream, irrespective of how these traps are going. Um, I'm really keen to start this guy. So we'll uh, we'll get cracking on him Wednesday night. It's going to be good. This guy, Septimus. This chap is your favourite model. 
He'd be up there, I reckon. Up there for me too. I've done these two. <coughs> I want to add some more colours to this stuff. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Reminder, I probably need another beer. Uh, I, I am keen to do some more historical. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like doing a couple of different categories at Queensland Model Hobby Expo. I'd like to try and enter as many different categories as I can. Ah, <laughs> oh, the great man Alfonso. I very much like Alfonso, actually. He's a cool guy. Well, that's a good conversation. I'll, I'll retract my comment about Sepsimus being my favourite Games Workshop model. He's definitely my favourite Nurgle model. I think. It'd either be it either be him or the Lord of Blights or the Lord of Plagues. One of those three models. They're all great. But yeah, Games Workshop have released so many fucking good models. I don't want to just restrict myself and say this is the best. I am confident that that brown is going to turn into a green, mate, so I think we'll be okay. But it is going to look like a muddy shit... shit green, so... Yeah, the, the Nurgle models are fantastic. I've already painted a Nurgle um, army. And... Yeah, I've, when you look back at just, just these warbands... From these... Underworld's models are just fucking obscenely good. Obscenely good. Oh, the press fit system sucks. Why do you feel that way, TJ? Did I add an extra bit of hair? I don't think so. Yeah, that's what I tend to do as well when I've assembled these push fits. I just cut the push fits and use plastic cement. Just have to give them a little trim. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you have to you have to trim them if you if you want to utilize them as normal Games Workshop models that are really high quality. The push fits designed to give you both options. You can knock them together really quickly and not be worried about what they look like, or you can do them, do them properly and trim the bits off, and they fit really well. Um, it is it is a very interesting appendage. Kind of looks like an inside-out sphincter or something, which is in keeping with Nurgle, I suppose. I 
Oh, are you ready for the best pro tip you'll ever get from Big Deno's School of Miniature Painting? It's all about PVA glue, mate. You fill gaps with PVA glue. Boom. Save you so much time. Don't have to mix up putty. Bit of PVA glue in there. Job done. Right, for new friends, new friends on the stream that have only just joined tonight, hope you're all doing well. I'd love to show you a little something of what I like to do. Here we go. Friends who've been on the stream for a while, just please yourselves for a bit. bit. I'm getting a beer. <laughs> change my mind I'm having a cinnamon whiskey wow here we go the crusader you're a you're a you're a joker yeah beautiful cinnamon whiskey it's called fireball it's just whiskey with a lovely hint of cinnamon it's great Oof. Oof. magnificent love it Oof. I'll wake you up in the morning Yes. Thanks, Meg. Thanks for managing my Discord, my second Discord for me. You're awesome. And if you want to go and hang out and pester Meg, um, that's the best place to do it. Have you been listening the whole time? I was giving you a big solid rap before. If I had known you were still on the chat, I probably wouldn't have done that. I would have waited until you were gone, talked about you afterwards. That's lucky. I didn't do that. I was telling everyone what a dickhead you were. Oh yes, awesome. Uh, just a sub count one flick, just so we, if you type exclamation mark sub sub count, people can find out how many people are in the running to win my walrus man. <laughs> I do love a bit of Necromunda actually, Charles Barkley's case. <laughs> No, Masculine's hasn't popped in again, uh, probably due to his mental breakdown about being a box art painter. <laughs> Poor guy, had a rough trot. No, I messaged him the other day, but no, haven't spoken to him. I love Necromunda, my god, I could talk about Necromunda all, all day. It was the most seminal gaming experience of my life. Just think back. The very first White Dwarf I ever purchased was White Dwarf 198. Hello, Quiff. White Dwarf 198. And in White Dwarf 198, Necromunda had come out. The episode, the edition before, I think, 197, they'd come out. And in 198, they had a battle report between Ratskins and Escher. And I remember reading that battle report, I reckon, about 8,000 times. Uh, I, that White Dwarf, mate, I read that cover to cover so many times. Ah, uh -huh, Nicker Jags. 
raising a glass to uh, cinnamon whiskey for Party Monday, mate. No, I'm exaggerating, mate. He didn't really have a he didn't really have a breakdown. He just decided he wasn't going to do it anymore because he started, you know, hating box arts, so he stopped doing it. And he just started doing stuff for himself and for, for commission work that he wants to do, and he's loving it again. But yeah, that, that Necromunda battle report, Raskins versus fucking Escher, so great. Mika Jags. What are we going to do if you win my subscriber giveaway, mate? Going to have to do something about that. I'm not going to give it to you, that's for sure. <laughs> G'day, Dubrock. Morning. Yes, it is bright and early. By my count, it's probably about 6 a.m. With my expert time skills. Beautiful, mate. Well, early morning, happy days to you. I know how my life would have been significantly less stressful. Where would you like me to insert the mirror? <laughs> Please. The tables have turned. My the tables have turned. The salad dodger. Yes, that's true. That is true. Telegram for the salad dodger. Oh, we had some good times. Some good times. Um, this and this and this. This is such a weird. Look how different these two metals are. May have to skew it a little bit more towards this blue colour. Just a little bit. We'll see. I might just do the base and see if that brings it together a bit more. Let's find out. This should be good.
that part is true. And uh, the big demo that you all know and love wasn't always the most kind and compassionate young man. Was I Nicky Jags? This is a little slug thing on here. Man, these bases, they're like so good and at the same time not so good. I wouldn't consider myself, I don't think I was a bully. I used to, I just used to be a massive pest. And I didn't take well to people pestering me back. But I never bullied people. In fact, I was always very protective of people that got bullied. school and a touch football Yeah, I don't think I don't think I ever bullied anyone really, but it's possible that that might not be the case. But we live and we learn, friends, and we hopefully get better. That's all you can try and do in this phase, in this life, is learn from your mistakes and try to become better. And in Randall's case, Nicky Jaguar's case, he became better by coming the Incredible Hulk and shaping his body into a weapon of mass destruction. In Big Deno's case, he became better by becoming much funnier. And I think we all know which is the better option. You're right. He was becoming a Twitch celebrity and being very funny. Let's just put this chat beside this chat and see how it looks. Uh, it might work. I think I want to skew it more towards blue anyway. Maybe just a little bit. What blue did I use? Probably Space Wolves Grey. Let's use Space Wolves Grey. Pose off. I shan't be doing a pose off. Nicky Jags. What a chump. What a champion. Please, Alex, I would love to give you an opinion. Here is an opinion for you. Um, pineapple on pizza is a win. Here endeth the opinion. I use a lot of contrast paints, friends. You may say that it's cheating. You may think I'm crazy. Mate, 
pineapple on pizza, it is awesome. I dig it. In Australia, they do this thing called a Supreme. I don't know if they do that elsewhere. But it is just pretty much everything you can get on a fucking pizza. It's the best. And it's got pineapple. Ten out of ten recommended. Oh, supreme, mate. Can't go wrong, mate. I tell you what. Get yourself some anchovies on there too. That's the ticket. Yeah, just fucking get amongst it. Have a go. Anchovies, get some some of those little sausage bits, fucking pepperoni, pineapple. Just fucking oh mate, get some of those octopus things on there too. I'll have it all. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't generally order them, but I wouldn't care if someone had those little fucking octopus thingies on there. I'd be like, yep, get that in and around my mouth, thanks. Oh, Dan's are on. Get in, son. Get in there, mate. Have it. You can't do that, love. <laughs> how often um, like people change orders these days you know like I've, it's, it's I actually go to restaurants myself and the only thing I'll, I'll, I won't say don't include this I'll usually just be like please add this like for example when I go get breakfast I'll get like a a big breakfast and then I'll be like may I please have some hollandaise in addition to that and also if you have halloumi I would appreciate some halloumi. And look, if if it's also on offer, I'd like some extra bacon in toast in your big breakfast. And usually that's what happens. They give me all of those things. And I don't know why um, I'm a fat fuck. No clue. Let's have a look at this. Um, on my dashboard on Twitch, it says, uh, I have 127 subscribers. Uh, so this is from Alex MF and this is a, um, a weird model. Ah, oh, okay. Um... What do I think about the colours? What do I think about the colours? Well, the bot's on drugs, mate. You need to sort that shit out. I paid good money for this bot. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, mate. Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really mind. Um, oh, that's crazy. That would drive me mental. Hey, mate, so here's my first piece of feedback about, about this model, Alex. <laughs> um, the the colour palette's pretty cool. I like that. Um, you've got you've got some issues with the, the placement of the highlights. 
Um, I'm specifically referring to the face, the, um, the highlights aren't reading right for me. Just think about where the light is coming from and then think about if each of those individual volumes has the placement um, correct. And I think there's probably a few there that, that could do with some tweaking. Um, the, the shirt, black's a very color, hard color to highlight without it looking like gray, but I do think you need a little more highlighting on the black. Um, if the orange uh, area is supposed to be a glow, I feel like it's supposed to be a glow from the, the ank on his chest. Um, there's there's a, a, a small issue with that um, being that the um, the light reflecting from the ank should not be as intense as the light creating the reflections. So um, what you've got right now is a light that is just as intense and just as powerful as the source, and it doesn't it doesn't work like that. So the light is most intense at the source, and then as you project out from there it gets progressively weaker and weaker so you definitely have to dim it down yeah so you want the actual ink to be the brightest color and then the other areas you probably just want to have be very subtle reflections um, that will help sell that area a little bit better um, I think the colors are pretty interesting though I, I like the I like the pale sort of head the black cloak and the and the coloured shirt. I think that's creating an interesting dynamic, and uh, yeah, it's 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 cool. And, and to also reflect on the last model that you posted in here, I feel like this is a pretty significant step up from that as well. So there's been some some solid progress in terms of um, the work that you've done. So mate, keep chipping away, keep painting, keep practicing, keep going. Golden rule, mate. Practice, practice, practice. Always. You know, I've decided I don't love what I've done with these models. I was on the fence at the start of the stream. I'm just not loving them. I don't know why. I think it's because I tried to do something different. A crazy palette. And they just haven't really worked. You're very welcome, mate. I started re-watching Daredevil Season 3 on the weekend after my stream yesterday. Fuck, it's good. Fuck, it's good. Vincent D'Onofrio is just an absolute showstopper in that fucking show. He is so good. It is just wild. You know, I, I, I can't really put my finger on it. Because I like, I like each of the individual colours and I like each of the individual sections. Maybe it's just because it's not finished, but the end result isn't something I'm enjoying. On any of them, really.
Maybe I just need to do these fabrics. Those fabrics are probably the only thing that's really standing out. Oh, Green Boy, thanks, mate. I'm glad. I'm glad you appreciate it. That's rock solid confirmation that I've gone the wrong path. No, I'm just teasing, mate. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't put my finger on it. You know when you try something new for the first time, like a colour palette or something, you always feel a bit like a goober. Well, I sort of feel a bit like a goober with these guys. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think there is definitely a focal point lacking. But what I wanted to do, and I made this decision after yesterday's stream, was put all three of them together because I feel like it's it's important that as a whole they're working not just as individuals because I've tried to be different and a different palette to what you traditionally see for these models and it may just be that I need to work on them as a whole as opposed to individuals. I've also been going for a, like a very different stylistic approach. I mean, normally my highlights are rough and sketchy, but in this instance, I'm actually trying to really lean into that and, and have a very rough highlighting approach and it's just different that's all we'll find out soon friends because we're going to be not far off um, having all three of them side by side at, at a somewhat finished level and we can make a decision then if we think it's working or not mm. Yeah, I think we're going to really give the Roman bust a crack. Um, it's been a while since I've really gone ham on a model. Um, so yeah, that that'll be that'll be the plan. Uh, Green boy, I tell you what, mate, these these are just fantastic models, mate. Like, so good. I mean, I think they're working pretty well as a whole. And it's cool that they've got different different vibes a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll just need to tweak them as a group. Maybe add some, add some shading that's consistent, like all of them. just to bring them back in a little bit of the same realms. G'day Ashes, thanks mate. Should all follow Ashes, he does great stuff. While we're at it, you should all follow Topolis, who's very close to 100. He's promised a hot tub stream with his amazing girlfriend. Uh, no, I actually ended up selling that Nurgle Army, mate. Um, I played the game a few times and I felt like I'd solved it. I didn't really think I wanted to play it that much more.
so they don't match anything, it's just made up. These are a cool, like, these are a cool way to paint some interesting different models. I, I tell you what, I've said it a lot, but Underworlds is such a cool, just for a, for a figure painter to get into. The models are so mad. I love old school games workshop, mate. I love it. G'day, Gallifire. Long time no see, mate. Hope you're doing well. Purple NMM. Let's have a look. Let me think about that for a second. Whilst it's up on screen, I need to think about that. So... My first observation is that you've done a really great job on the hand and the breastplate, but the lower um, areas, particularly the bottom one, don't quite read as well for metal. Um, the, the, breast, the breastplate feels like it's absolutely bang on in terms of where the lights are placed. Um, but the, the, the lower section's not quite as, um, reading quite as well. The, for it to really be sold as metal, I think you want to try and introduce a secondary environmental colour into like the lower shadow highlight area bit, whether that's, um, see a dancer on some sort of ochre colour to represent like earth, but also create a contrast with the purple or a green if you want to stick it in like a secondary triad. Um, but yeah, just some other um, color to, to reinforce that it's supposed to be a metallic surface. And then I think you want to you want to really bump up the final highlight, um, some spot highlights of. I wouldn't go white, I think white wouldn't quite look right. I'd go a really bright ochre. I mean, the colour that, that jumps out to me would be this one, which is pastel violet, which is an AK third gen. It's like a bright purple. But orchid light or something, just with some white in it, just so you can have that really crisp pop sort of light. But the, the hand in particular stands out as, as really um, solid in terms of how the lighting's been done as well as the breastplate. But yeah, this this bottom one feels less impressive. I feel like the, the based on how you've highlighted the, the breastplate, you know, where you've hit that, that sort of middle section as opposed to the top section, it should be there um, in the same sort of positioning on that area and you haven't, you've gone from the top, so. Um, Mm, pretty detailed critique there, but I think you can take it. You're a big boy. 
but it's great. I like I like it a lot. The eyes don't look great, specifically the left one. Yeah, the left one looks wrong. Too big a separation around the the eyeball, black and white. So, good job though, mate. As I said, you should all follow Ashes. Can paint. Better than me. Of course, mate. I'd love to see your Sepsimus. I've seen your work on Instagram. It's excellent. So... You've gone for a very, like, traditional colour palette, if I remember rightly. Yep. Um, yeah, so Space Toy is doing cool stuff. Um, he's painted a number of Nurgle models that I've observed on his thing. He's very slow, though. Um, but yeah, so there's there's a lot of great stuff here. The reflections of the green in the lower parts of the of the non-metallic metal looks really bang on. Um, the placement of the lights on the green is really good. G'day Stonebeard, uh, which is great. Um, I think you could do with uh, like an edge light around on these green areas, like on the edges. Um, you know, this sort of stuff's awesome here. Um, perfect placement, you know, really, really cool colours. Um, the These heads probably need to be toned down a little. I feel like they're a bit distracting um, there. And I reckon you could artificially add some value to this section. Um, you know, it could look cool is adding some like some light coming out of those things you're probably better than I am I couldn't do that I don't think they're too small but you look like you could do that maybe just put a like a glow coming from his helmet just because at the moment the first thing I look at is this that's the only thing I'm seeing when I look at it from a distance the whole face is getting lost in uh, in this which is the highest value area this is nice this whole sword no doubt you'll be adding some rust effects to it at some point soon, so I won't comment on that. But yeah, very cool, mate. Very cool. And this is what I've done in an hour and two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only thing that jumps out to me, mate, is the face grill is just getting a little bit lost. Yeah, the face the face is weaker because that the eye, the left eye from our position, the right her right eye is uh, is incorrect. Thanks, Volod, Volod Yuka. And just to clarify, friends, we, we do we do feedback sessions on here anytime you want. Just post a picture if you want to have a chat about what you're working on. I'll happily do some feedback anytime for anyone. Mostly. Tonight. And anyone who just joined later, we had Meg Maples come on tonight, my friend Meg, she came on and had a good old chat, so if you want to see her chat, she got on after about 20 minutes I think, 
So have a listen to the replay on my YouTube or on Twitch if you want or not. Nick Jags, you do not get a special mention. No. So one of the rules of feedback, Voluduca, if you're if you're new here, which I believe you are, uh, we have a special rule in feedback. It's that you get hammered. So don't be offended if you get hammered. Um, it is just how it is. Um, first observation: potato photo. What have we got in focus in this photo? I'll tell you. It's this lovely whole red, or um, as it is in uh, in this, I believe it's Maron Rojitsu. I think. Let me check. I want to check now. I'll read. Maron Rojitsu. I've got it right there. So try to get your model in focus next time. That'd be good. Uh, but I love the transition between uh, the blue into the uh, black red is Rojo Negro. That's great. I uh, love the transition between blue and red. I think you could probably come a little bit more between the two, like just lean a little bit more into the purple. But overall that looks really cool. Uh, bases, pretty cool. That'll be a very impressive looking army mate, so well done. Jolly good show. Burn red's great. I just love reds man, it's one of the reasons I started these guys with red. I'm just like, fuck yeah, I want to paint with some reds. Reds. Fucking reds. This colour is called pistachio. It's an AK colour. It's a nice colour. Oh, bronze non-metallic metal. Yeah. That is a that is a tough gig. G'day Nurgle Matthew, thanks mate. Hope you're doing well, champion. G'day, Kung Fu, what's going on? Damn it. Damn it. I tried to buy something. Oh, Nagel Matthew, what a champion! Welcome to the stream, mate. Thanks for following. I don't know if you saw these, mate, but this is this is the other traps in the warband. Since you're Nurgle Matthew, makes sense to show you the whole kit and caboodle. What a legend. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thanks, buddy. Elenia, Space Toy, Ashes, Rosens Metal. All of you guys go into the draw to win this, uh, this big, this big guy. See you, Gore. This guy. I still haven't set up sub count yet, Mini MF, sorry. <laughs> Flick said he's gonna do it now. But he hasn't done it yet. This is what you're in the draw to win, friends. Draw's on Saturday actually. 
Awesome, mate. What a champion. Uh, you love to see, Ashes, you love to see someone using the right yaw. Benny, pay attention, mate. You love to see it. Tales of yore, exactly. Oh, thank you for hosting Horizons Medal. What a great night we're having, friends. We've got to talk to my friend Meg. Meg and Matthew's gifting out subs. We're painting some great models. It's just a great night. I love Party Monday. I wish every day was Party Monday. You know what I mean? Just wish it. Wish all of you could join me every Monday and every day. <laughs> Broadside, I understand your frustration, mate. It is true, I am quick. But yeah, there's a lot of people who can do stuff that I can't. So swings and roundabouts. Green boy, maybe I was too harsh on you, mate. <laughs> ah, Stormy, you kill me, mate. Am I back to being your favourite again? Come on. Please. Tell me I'm your favourite. I need it. Cola just keeps embarrassing me with his paint jobs. Makes me look like a chump. I need validation that you still think I'm the best. And that he sucks. Meg talking about, yes. And you love to see the right yaw being used as well. Benny couldn't do that. Meg talking about me and Dave like we're our children. It's great stuff. You know how everyone's got a favourite? Favourite child? I'm Meg's favourite child. Don't tell Dave. Okay, I'll happily fight anyone. <laughs> Let's go. Let's rock. You and me, Cole. Boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room. Let's spend the night together from now until forever. Boom, 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 boom. Me and Dave Cowell together in my room. I realise that may have slightly different connotations of what I initially intended it, but... Um, I did mean that David and I should fight in my room. And uh, I shan't be backing down from my comment. Uh, Hugo's going uh, really, really poorly today. Unfortunately, my poor girlfriend came home from work today. It was her first day back after three weeks off. And her the week prior to um, going on holiday, she was also in lockdown. So she'd been at home with Hugo for pretty much four weeks on the trot. I hadn't really spent any time away from him. And so she went on 
as finger boys. She went on uh, on on the bus back to work or the, the ferry back to work, and she came home and little Hugo was um, just absolutely pinging. He was so excited about everything. Um, and so my girlfriend took him for a walk and he just got very, 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 very defensive and protective and angry. Every time he saw another dog, he was just losing his head, just absolutely going off. He got in the, in the elevator in my girlfriend's apartment. He went off at a dog in the elevator who he's normally really nice to. He's just, he's a young, young man who doesn't know how to handle his emotions. Yeah, and so he was he was having a bad day, and my girlfriend called me when she got home on it from her walk, and she was in tears. She was just having a terrible day. Um, she was like, "This is the worst. This is my first day back, and I just wanted to come home and have a nice walk." And Hugo acted like a fuckwit, and he barked at every dog, and I was so embarrassed, and I couldn't handle it. She just had a tough day. Yeah, it's not surprising to me that he had a that he had a bad day uh, on a walk. I think he was just being protective. Like I think he was he's so excited that she's back. He's like, get away from my mum. She's my mum. You fucks. Leave her alone. You know that sort of mindset. Yeah. So, but unfortunately, my girlfriend was not having a good day and. She just wanted to have a nice walk, and instead, she just felt like she was being judged by everyone for a bad dog training. I felt like saying to her, look, that's not what it is. I mean, he literally just turned one, right? So he's still a little baby. So he doesn't know what's going on. Ah, oh, g'day, Ramaskira. Yeah, I'm just, I just want him to chill out a bit. He's he's still only young, so I know he'll calm down a bit. But it's just related to the fact that he's a part chihuahua. Yeah, poor poor kiddo. She's had a tough day today. I did a good job. I did a good job too on my phone call. You know how when you're a dude, and your missus calls you and she's like, having a rough day. My normal response, most most men's response is like, how can I fix this problem for you? I'd like to fix this problem. Because it sounds like you've got a problem and I'd like to fix it for you. And so you go into solution mode and you're like, why didn't you just do this? And then she's all like getting angry at you because you're trying to fix a problem. She doesn't want to fix the problem. The problem's there. She just wants to talk about the problem. She just wants to share how she was feeling. And so today, I remembered that. And so I was just an empathetic ear. And I said things like, that's tough, mate. I'm sorry that happened. And wow, what a tough day back at work. And she finished the conversation and she was very, very happy. She was much happier than when we started the conversation. I was just like, I've leveled up. I've leveled up as a boyfriend. Hopefully I can do that every time though. Because sometimes she'll be like, this happened. And I'll be like, this is how we fix it. And then she'll be like, that won't work. And then we'll get into an argument because I'm trying to fix the problem instead of just listening. Yeah. One of these days I'll get there. One of these days. Uh, yeah, snacks is usually a good option, but mate, my girlfriend is currently trying to lose weight and currently like trying to eat healthy. And so every time I, I pursue that option, um, I get in trouble because I'm not helping. Another one, don't bring a bottle of wine and be like, here you go. That's a bad decision. <laughs> no. 
I'm making out my girlfriend's a lunatic. She's not. She's a fucking legend. She's just having a really tough time at work. First day back today. After effectively four weeks off. Tough, tough gig. Yeah, celery stick would be good. Bring her a celery stick. I reckon that'd go down like a fucking lead balloon. I reckon you go, I brought you a celery stick. I brought you a piece of carrot. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> I'd get shouted out of the room. Not really. It's funny when I talk about it like this. For comedic effect. Uh, I prefer the rocks that are sculpted on this base, but I don't prefer all these details. Like, what I would like is less details. These little fucking, these little jobbos here, this is a little, I don't know what those animals are called, but it's one of those things, tentacle, centipede. And this is like a, a bug with a slippery tongue, and I don't even know what the fuck these are. So, generally, I, I like I like the way that the Games Workshop sculpts these rocks. They've got really nice angles, and they're really easy to paint. This sand looks really well. Yeah, it is the model with the tail fin, though. Um, these models look really good. Um, with the bases, but I just don't like I like people telling me what to do. Don't tell me how to paint my base this game's workshop. Fuck you. I don't want to paint a fucking centipede on my base. Don't tell me what to do, you wankers. I would love to put a cup on for her, but we don't live together. So that makes it hard sometimes for me to be able to be a positive influence. What an exciting night we've had tonight. We've had Meg. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Very good. We've had Meg come onto the stream. We've had Big Dino painting. What a great night. Um, all right, I want to have a look at these three guys together now. Oh, it's starting to come together now. It's starting to come together. Oh, don't take a photo, do I? We've got, we've got different tones in the metal, which is cool. <laughs> but I need to, I need to bring some more, I need to bring some more harmony between the three, L, the three models, I think, the three musketeers. There needs to be something tying them together. I need more orange. Do the orange bell probably. Um, this guy needs more work, still more work and stuff. Could work, could work. 
Um, I feel, for some reason, I'm feeling like purple. Like just adding some purple um, subtly from with the airbrush. Maybe just from a specific direction, just to add some purple nuance might bring them together in a in a cohesive way but I don't want to go heavy on that mm. yeah I'm just I didn't want to do these like you know it's very easy when you do a warband like this right you, you pick a color palette and you just do the same colors on the whole model I didn't want to do that I wanted to treat each one separately individually and just you know see what happened organically as I painted each one. And so I sort of used different color palettes for all of them, different things for the metals, and there's there's elements of it that has worked really well. Like I think if we put this, this one's actually my least favorite at the moment, so I'll put these two side by side. They kind of work. They kind of work, I think, together. You've got, you have different tones across both of them, but there's still, you know, a sense of harmony because of the magenta sort of underlying colors that's, that's present. It kind of feels like it works. This one's the problem one. I don't feel like this. I think it's actually the horns, you know what? I think it's these horn things that I did. Maybe I just need to change them. Have them be not as bright. Maybe bring them black into like black, black colors or something. Mm. All right. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna muck around with those. I was thinking I was gonna muck around with them tonight as well, but I think I'm just gonna keep bringing this guy closer and closer, and then we'll I might work on those off stream. See if we can get a finished, finished warband out of them somehow. Yeah. is a good idea actually rusty orange for those horns it's a good idea Destinies, but once every hundred thousand years, the sun, when the sun does shine and the moon does glow, and the grass does grow. He goes to say, The beast was stunned, whip crack with his rubber tail, and the beast was done. He asked us, Be you angels? And we said, Nay. We are but men, rock. This is not the greatest song in the world, no. This is just a tribute. Couldn't remember the greatest song in the world, no. This is a tribute, whoa. The greatest song in the world, wow, 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 wow. The greatest song in the world, now. <laughs> City Hall, 
useful information to do. I don't recall listening to that recently. It's been a long, long time. I can only remember uh, Fucker Gently and Tribute. The two songs that I can remember that I could sing, I think. I'm gonna fuck you sweetly. I'm gonna bow you discreetly. And you say, hey, how about your flowers? And you said, wait a minute, Sally. I think I got something in my teeth. Can you get it out for me? That's fucking teamwork. What's your favorite position? That's cool with me. It's not my favorite, but I'll do it for you. What's your favorite dish? I'm not going to cook it, but I'll order it from Zanzibar. I do remember Billy Green. That is a fucking banger. Fucking Billy's Green. I there was a couple of GW paints that to this day I still think about. I wish that I had them. Scorch Brown. Snake White Leather. Vermin Brown was a fucking absolute ball terror. Hawk Turquoise. Mm. Get in. Get in, Hawk Turk. <laughs> yeah. I <was> every <laughs> Yeah, me too. Every, I'm not in that particular instance because I don't think I've played Civilization ever in my life, but anytime I see the word Zanzibar, I'm not going to cook it, but I'll order it from Zanzibar! And then I'm going to love you completely. And then I'll fucking fuck you discreetly. And then I'm going to fuck you Uh, another another green boy moment where he's like, hey, I'm going to rub into Denno that I've got something that he wants. How do you like these apples, Denno? Suck it. You're a fucking idiot. Classic green boy. Classic green boy moves. Just classic. You ever considered not being a fucking knob end, mate? Has that ever fucking crossed your mind? Snake White Leather was a cracker. I'm just teasing you, mate. I know if I asked, you'd give them to me in a heartbeat. I don't want them. I've got enough fucking pants right now. I don't even have space for them. Right now. Right now, I've got all my pants in front of me. I've built a little fucking thing to carry them all. And they already spill over onto my desk. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Look. Here is my paints. This is my life, but here is my paints. Check this out. This is a bad idea. It took me ages to get this angle spot on. Look at all my fucking paints. This is my computer screen here, and here's these paints, which are not even supposed to be there. That's supposed to be a shelf for model stuff, and then here's more of these bad boys. And then look, I built this all the way over here, and I've even got more fucking paints up here, more paints down here. What a joke that is, eh? Nah, they weren't that much better, mate. It's just nostalgia talking. But they're pretty good. Don't get me wrong, they're pretty good. But you're talking about back in an era when there wasn't much else that was on a comparable level to them, really. But they were good. What's the time? Oh, look at this, friends. We're, we're about to wrap up Party Monday. Wow, what a great night I've had. I feel very positive about this experience tonight. 
feel like we all had a great, great life lesson in how to handle shit situations, thanks to Gregory. We got to talk to one of my heroes in Meg. We got to try and paint this cool guy. I sold all my P3, I didn't sell them, I just gave them away. But yeah, I used to have a heap of P3 and I gave them away. Now, just, this is just the paints I use too. I've got like two boxes of paints just here that are all other paints that I don't use. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. What a, what a crazy time. I love Party Monday so much. And then I get to roll straight into uh, Tuesdays, which is when I play board games, which is great, which rolls straight into Wednesdays, which is where I hang out with my missus for a bit. And then I come and stream again. And then all of a sudden, it's almost the weekend. Oh, Gregory, mate. I'm glad you're here because I've got an opportunity to share something with you that I shared with the rest of the stream earlier. And I'm glad you're here. It's a great night to share it. And I'm just about to finish up, so it's a good time. I'm going to put this trap aside and we'll have a look at Morrigan a little bit more whilst we talk to Gregory. Gregory, g'day TJ Miniatures. Mate, the other day on my Wednesday night stream, we had a moment where we had a chap who came in and he said something that I found a little bit um, confronting at the time and I didn't really know how to handle it. It was a chap who said something disparaging towards women and I've just commented on what a magnificent handling of that situation you delivered to our chat and to me to set an example for a way that you can handle that in a compassionate and kind and respectful way but still also calls out the behaviour. It was a great lesson for me and I wanted to say thank you. I've been reflecting on it since that occurred. What a magnificent handling of that situation from you, mate. Well done and thank you for being there. Yep. Ted said, legend. Is a difficult one for me because I like to think of myself as a very good person at managing difficult situations because it's part of what I do on my job. And I think a lot of the time I do a, a reasonable job at it. But every now and then something happens where you're not as good as you think you are. And this was one of those moments. It was the first time someone had really been like on my stream said something where I was like, holy shit, I don't think you can say that, mate, but he did. Anyway, Gregory, thank you. What a human. And just in case I didn't spell it out, Gregory's response was to ask if everything was okay with this young man. And it was obvious that he was not coping well with the situation and that he was lashing out. And he said as much in the chat and sort of apologised and felt a bit foolish, I think. But yeah, it was just great stuff. Yeah, this is a classic, this is an absolutely classic model. I can't wait to paint this. Oh, you can, look, a dude just came on and I was, I, I'd, I'd made, I, we were chatting about something, something to do with women and how great my missus is or something like that. And he's like, he said something like all women are bitches or idiots or something. And, uh, and I was a bit like, and I didn't really know what to say. And when I reflect back on it, I wish I had have called it out more aggressively than I did. Um, but fortunately, Gregory stepped up and said, that's not okay, mate. We don't speak like that around here, but is everything okay? If you ever need to talk to someone, 
I'll be there. She's just King Gregory. Change your name on Twitch to King Gregory, please. I demand it. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to paint this model. Eh? <laughs> this is just like wild. Thank you, Illicit L. This is a wild model. There are so many little little bits that are so cool. It's just wild. Yeah, she arrived today, so we may very well start her after the Wyman Tribune. She's based on the Morrigan, and uh, we actually have a dude in here named Finn who doesn't want to paint this model because of the Morrigans. Um, she's, a, she's a spirit of bad. Well, not necessarily bad, but capricious and gives people what they want, even if they don't like what they want type of thing. She does a bit, look a bit like Eva Green, doesn't she? She's got that sort of facial structure. I'm probably not slim enough. It's just, it's just nuts, like corpse paint. Let's see if we can zoom in on her face. I wonder if I can get her face in focus. No, I can't. I just, there's, there, there is some detail in here, but it's just like chains and stuff around her head that's wild, absolutely wild. So, kung fu, we shan't be doing corpse paint, mate. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with her, actually, with the paint job on her. Because there's there's these little candles, right, so that my immediate inclination is to go for a very... Um, stylistic... lit from below... Roman Gruber-esque colour palette where you've just got blues and orange. But I sort of want to do a pretty cool job. We'll see. She's a, she's a great model. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, they do. They can't, they, mate, everything about this is at a level of detail that shouldn't be possible on a, on a fucking model of this scale, but it is. All right, friends, this is what we painted tonight on stream, this little Sepsimus. And I'll probably finish those chaps off stream. I'll put those up for sale somewhere. Um, so if anyone's interested in buying them, you'll be able to buy them. Next cab off the rank is Roman Tribune. We're going to start him on Wednesday night. And then we'll probably do this chick afterwards. Yeah, I think so. Party Monday. Let's go find someone to raid. You're all great friends. They're all great. Yeah, I, I bought four models from um, Ignis Art the other night. No, I don't think I don't think we'll give those away, mate. Thanks for following Coranus. King Gregory. Maybe we will. I might change my mind. Miniature figures. Who do we have on? We have Mike Moans. That guy is such a such a character. The hobby room. Go see what's happening in the hobby room. They came and had a look at my YouTube stream the other day. Let's get into it. So it was. Yeah, let's raid the hobby room. Basically, when I was painting it on, there was a little bit of a raised area because of the amount of paint I was putting on. But... She she f mess commented on my on my YouTube channel the other day. The hobby room. Very nice. Alright friends, you're all amazing. Thanks for your, your presence tonight. You're all great. Thank you, Quiff. <laughs> uh, have a great night, friends. Enjoy. I'll see you Wednesday if you join us. Gracias. Big General out. Raid!
which I'm not going to divulge because you still probably don't want me to divulge that information. Oh. Big Deno, thank you very much for the raid! What have you got? Oh, couple of things. Well, Queen Go. Uh. How was your stream, Big Deno? What were you working on? Chat, if you can go and give Big Deno a follow, that would be great. Oh, thanks. Being handed necrons. <laughs> On the topic of necrons, I've just been handed lots of necrons. <laughs> Wonkasaurus, thank you for the follow. Green Boy, thank you for the follow. Big Dino, thank you for the follow. And a squid drug as well. I traded a lot of stuff that we had in boxes still. So I spent a whole total of 10 p <laughs> Mini Manta, thank you very much for the follow. More 40k squigs. Why do we put some in? Yeah. 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 Very good. Continue painting up the half painted units that I've got as well. Where'd you get water plus from? Instar. That was a great. Yeah, 63 people came in. How do you do, dude? Just some Nurgle friends. Awesome. If you've got any photos, uh, we'd love to see. Feel free to share either in Discord or if you've got a link to social media as well, that would be great. But hello to Big Deno Mini Manson, Wampasaurus, Green Boy, uh, Ben Layton. Uh, for those of us that have said hello, fantastic. Does Water Plus work on metallic paints? Yes. Pretty much anything. That's what I that highlight on my Necrons. That's a silver highlight. Tinged with water plus. It evenly distributes the pigment rather than having stretching it. Stretching it. Stretching. Yeah. It, it's magic. It's magic. It's magic think, water. Think of it like a traffic conductor conducting the traffic where it needs to go, and the pigments are like. Well, this is it. Good, I it. Has it cooled down yet? Uh, it's twenty degrees today instead of thirty. So yes. Still not a lot, but yes. Let's drink that. Fine. Greetings from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota! That's a big thing. Mm. It's awesome. Oh, the Patreons don't like that. Me. But when I was running up into the week before, I did yeah, say I would reveal it this weekend. This, this week. Yeah, it's this weekend, isn't it? You want to reveal it? I have a main question and a side question. Uh, great word, and yes. Uh, I used it in airbrush. Main question. Oh, okay. By Moonstruck. I knew about that one. I didn't know about that one. Right. Right. There's a box I really want to do, but I can't be bothered to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Literally everything's fine. You just clean up the box. Hobby quest. For those of you that aren't aware, quest is happening. I'm too big to fit in the tube. You are. You want me to move some stuff from behind you? <laughs> in your butt up like that. Aha! Hello. Great. Hobby quest. Happening this weekend. Essentially, I'm going to be sat on stream for... 20... <laughs> my lips on the screen was hilarious. 24 hours, so 12 hours on Saturday, 12 hours on Sunday, starting at 10 a.m. BST. Um, there is going to be a challenge for you guys to be able to uh, pick up some hobby and paint some stuff and do some stuff, whether it's painting, building, crochet, taking over the world, okay. having a massive poop, whatever you want to do, as long as it's hobby. <laughs> that's your hobby, that's your hobby, you do it. Basically, it's just a, a way to try and get you guys to do some hobby as well. 